Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jess Lenore in Baltimore. No end in sight as of Friday for the roughly two dozen wildfires burning in Northern California that have now claimed the lives of at least 31 people and left hundreds missing. It's the most lethal wildfire event in California's history, killing people while they slept in their beds. The National Weather Service is saying 60 mile an hour winds and low humidity will, quote, contribute to extreme fire behavior into Saturday. But what's getting far less attention is what role human actions from climate change to fire suppression have played in making these fires so catastrophic. We'll discuss this with a leading expert in the field. Dr. Matthew Herto is an associate professor in the Department of Biology at the University of New Mexico. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. So we know that uh, California Governor Jerry Brown has acknowledged the role of climate change, but when you read, when you, when you read the news, when you watch um, cable news channels, there's far less emphasis on the role of human action in making these fires so bad. Uh, and to be clear, no one's saying that, you know, no one's saying you can point to any one of these fires and say this was caused by climate change, but talk about exactly what role human actions have played in making these fires so catastrophic. Sure. So there, there are two factors at play here. One is the, the climate angle. Um, so there's been some attribution work in uh, understanding the role of climate change in influencing fires. And, and we know a couple of things with, with a, a pretty great deal of certainty. And one is uh, as temperature has increased uh, due to anthropogenic or human caused climate change, uh, the area burned by wildfire in the western U.S. has increased. And that's because uh, spring spring snow melt is happening earlier, so there's a longer fire season. At the same time, as temperature is increased, uh, that is uh, increasing the amount of atmospheric water demand. So basically, the movement of water from vegetation in the ecosystem to the atmosphere, which dries out that vegetation and makes it more combustible. And so those are two climatic factors that are influencing uh, the area burned. Uh, and then on the other side of the equation is that fires are a natural part of many of these ecosystems. And we've been putting fires out for a very long time uh, since the early 1900s. And that has fundamentally altered the structure of some of these ecosystems. So we've got more trees uh, in some of these drier forests than we used to have, and that makes them uh, more prone to these big hot fires that we see now. And, uh, you know, anyone that's taken like a middle school level, um, bio, you know, science or biology class knows that fires are a natural part of, of the ecosystem of, you know, of, of existence in, in, the, in, the, the, in the forest. So by, by suppressing these, we're helping make these, these huge forest fires more likely. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, absolutely. So we, uh, we used to have, uh, I mean, there were large fractions of the Western U.S. landscape that had fires burning in them prior to fire suppression. It was just a different type of fire. Uh, so where we used to have in these drier forest types, uh, we used to have regular surface fires. So happening every, you know, 5, 10, 15 years or so. Uh, when we've Put, been putting those out for a hundred years, there's a lot more fuel in the forest now in the form of uh, both dead biomass, so dead plant material, and also in the form of, of live plant material, uh, such that when we get an ignition now under these extreme weather conditions, high wind speeds, high temperature, uh, low relative humidity, uh, it has the potential to turn into one of these big conflagrations that we see where uh, fire is burning through tree canopies at very high rates of speed and, and can be quite impactful to communities that it intersects with. And you've also looked at what can be done about this, what can, what can mitigate this in the, in the short term. We know in the long term, there has to be serious human action as far as limiting uh, CO2 emissions, first of all, something the Trump, Trump administration is working to undo uh, those limits as far as Obama's clean power plan and other initiatives. Um, but let's start with the short term. What can be done um, to help, uh, stop, help stop making these fires so catastrophic? There's something like 20 burning right now in California alone. Yeah, so the, the big thing, there's uh, lots and lots of research has been done on this uh, very question. And the one thing is clear is that 
Um, fire is a natural part of these systems and part of the way that we fight these big fires is by actually restoring fire, so burning the forest. Uh, and we want to do that under more benign weather conditions. So when the winds are not blowing as fast, uh, temperatures are lower, fuel moisture or the amount of uh, moisture in the vegetation is higher, uh, that influences the fire effects and the way that fire behaves on the landscape. And so there are a number of examples uh, in the U.S., uh, say Yosemite National Park, Sequoia National Park, and the Gila National Forest forest where they've been managing natural fire ignitions for a while. So a lightning strike occurs, uh, the winds are calm, they will actually let those fires burn. And when they do that, uh, they're basically restoring fire as a natural process. And so when an ignition occurs uh, under these more extreme conditions, uh, that wildfire, if it actually starts, will burn into an area that's been previously burned by this lower severity fire. And, and it fundamentally alters the fire behavior when it hits that area and the flame lengths go down uh, and the rate of spread decreases. And if you had the ear of the Trump administration as it uh, moves to expand fossil fuel extraction, uh, remove limits to um, CO2 emissions and other, and other such moves, um, what would you tell them today uh, in the face of these historic fires in California? So, yeah, we're, I mean, we're so far this year, the last number I saw is we've spent $2.3 billion on fire suppression in the U.S. this year alone. Uh, that's a substantial sum. Uh, it's likely to go up uh, at, with continued climate change. And so functionally, what we need to do from a forest perspective is get out in front of this and start investing in uh, managing our forests to restore surface fire in these uh, lower elevation forest ecosystems and, and get that natural process back in place so that these uh, systems are a little more resilient to the climate change that's ongoing. All right, we want to thank you so much for joining us. Dr. Matthew Herto is an associate professor in the Department of Biology at the University of New Mexico. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll certainly be in touch to keep following this important story. Again, there's no end in sight to these fires. At least 31 people ha have died that we know of because hundreds remain missing. Um, we'll keep following this. Thank you so much for your work. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you for watching The Real News Network.